So last time in the previous video to this series, I said that we played, somehow we played six games and I realized what happened, right? Get this, right? So if you played this game, you'll know that qualifiers are highlighted in blue and friendly matches are highlighted in green. So what happened was I had a friendly match against Luxembourg here, right? And I simulated it because it was a, a friendly match because we've got Luxembourg in our group already and there's no point in, um, you know, playing it because we already have Luxembourg. But what the game has done is it gave me the wrong colour. This wasn't an international friendly. This was a qualifier, but it's somehow like glitched out because look, if I go deeper into the um, run, this match is now we have Bulgaria and then we have Ukraine and then we have Russia again and then we have Bulgaria again. So that's four. But where are the fifth matches? Look, there's a friendly against Malta there. The draw happens there. So qualification will be over. So the game glitched out and actually told me it was a friendly match. Even though it wasn't a friendly match, it was a qualifier match. And guess what happened? We drew 1-1. That is absolute BS. I simulated it because I thought it'd just be a random friendly match. And it gave me that result when, when it was actually a qualifier. Because we've played six games. Look, if you have a look at the table, if I look at it in depth right now, we played six games. We definitely did not play six games on the last video. I've never had that before in a 2014 World Cup run. So I guess this video is just going to be the four matches we got left. All right then. So we just need to win our last few matches in order to qualify. We can't afford to drop any more games and we haven't played Bulgaria yet. So they're a bit of a mystery to me on this. Are they going to play well or are they going to be frustrating or are they going to be a walk in the park? Amenko still got it here behind Tanio. Great goal, and that is going to be 1-0 to Finland. What a start this is to the video. Luxembourg have equalised against Russia, so that's good. It pins Russia back. Let's hope that Luxembourg can get a good result against them and hopefully will go through and qualify with no issues. It's good play. Here comes Bulgaria. And, oh, that was lucky that wasn't a penalty. Over the top, Marquinhos. Okay, that doesn't sound Bulgarian in the slightest, but okay. Crossed in, punched away. Good punch, by the way. That was actually one of the best times to use a punch. He actually punched it to a correct player there. Go on. Through ball. Uh, Menko. The good save. Go on. Oh, come on. What was that? So, as long as... Oh my goodness, that was close. And they almost scored again. <laughs> like, that was so close. Unbelievably close there. They hit the post because my defenders didn't want to deal with it. And they almost put it in from the rebound. Oh no, Russia are beating Luxembourg 5-1. When did that happen? That score update did not come up for ages. And then it was like, hey, 5-1 now. It's like, come on. Bad pass there by Bulgaria over the top. And it's cut out. Really has not been a good game in terms of action. It's only been a few chances. Come on, blow the whistle, referee. Come on, it's been the 90th minute for like six minutes. Come on, blow the whistle, ref. Go away, Bulgaria. And they just keep giving Bulgaria fouls all the time. And now they have a free kick on the edge of the box on the wing. It's crossed in, punched. Get rid of it. Oh my goodness, like the game really wants me to bottle this and they, oh my goodness, I cannot believe that. The referees did not stop play. They, did, they didn't call for full time and then he scored in the 90th minute. Look at this gap in the middle there. I, have, I was powerless to stop that and that is disastrous. What a disaster for Finland. What a disaster. Like, bottling that is just incredible work. The referees did not stop play. It was full time. The 90th minute was on the screen for way longer than it should have been. So we got our next match against Ukraine away from home. Not looking forward to this. 
I'm really not. We bottled it against Bulgaria. We should have won and pulled away at the top of the standings. Like, miles. We've got three games left. Ukraine, Russia and Bulgaria again. We need to get two wins out of three to secure qualification. Just trying to find space and time. Oh, that would have been a good idea, but no, we just couldn't get the shot off. Over the top. Headed away by Finland. Tackle, but it went straight back to Ukraine. What is that all about? Ukraine in the box. Oh, this is not good. And it's just cleared, thankfully. And they got it back. And it's cleared again. Come on. Get rid of it when you need to. Trying to defend against Ukraine is a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. Free kick to Finland. Is there a chance here? I'm going to try and bend it in if I can. Omenko. <gasps> it, it just went in. It's just gone in. Omenko has scored a free kick and it's 1-0. How did that just go in? Like, I barely score free kicks on this game and he just curled it in. Wow, what a free kick. And that is 1-0 to Finland. That is definitely what we needed. What a free kick that was. So it's half time and thanks to Omenko, it is 1-0. That free kick was really good. I didn't even expect that to fly into the back of the net. Especially away from home against Ukraine. And it was quite a fair distance out as well. It wasn't like right on the edge of the box. It was like quite far away. So yeah, it was a very good free kick. Over the top by Ukraine, Yarmolenko, just a weak header into the box. They haven't done an awful lot, and I intend to keep it that way. It's a good ball, and Ukraine hit the side netting. Okay, come on, let's not bottle this like we did against Bulgaria. My players are so tired now, because some of these games are literally like back-to-back. -back. So you'll play, I don't know, I played Bulgaria, and then three days later, I've got to play... Ukraine, which is just like, I get it, you know, that's the format and everything, but it's just like, I'm not going to play sort of substitutes and reserves against Ukraine. I'm not doing it. Finland, you need to hold on this time. You cannot bottle this one. Do not make it closer than it needs to be on the final couple of days of qualifying. There we go. Finally, he blows the whistle after like, I don't know, six minutes added time. And we won against Ukraine 1-0. That's a huge step towards World Cup qualification with only two games remaining. Should be still top of the group, I think. All right, so it will come down to the Russia game. They are two points behind us. If we lose against them, then we'll have to go through via the playoffs. If we win or draw, then we should be okay, I think. Actually, no, no, no. Not drawing, just a win. We need a win. So this is the match that really, truly matters. It's Finland versus Russia. If we beat them, we'll qualify. If we lose, then we have to rely on the final day and hope they lose on the final day. And I'm not sure who they have on the final day as well. You know, they could have like someone like Ukraine or... They'll have Luxembourg again and just smash them. Actually, no, they can't have Luxembourg again because they've already played them twice. So maybe Latvia? I don't know. But yeah, we really, really need to win this one. We should be at full stamina for this game. So there's really no excuses. We're at full strength as well in terms of like injuries and stuff. If we draw against them, then it's not too bad. But it will definitely come down to the final game. It's a through ball. A shot. Just goes wide there from Russia. I was afraid that was actually going to go bottom corner. There's just no space to actually contend with Russia at the moment. Like, no space to pass the ball or anything. We're giving away so many fouls. I don't know if this is going to go our way. Over the top. What a ball. Can we capitalise on this chance? No, not quite. Hang on. Oh, what a save by the Russian keeper. How on earth did he save that? The rebound shot came off here. I don't think he knew too much about it. It was a hell of a save. Lampy. He got it here and it's offside. Again, every single time we push forward, it's either offside or a block. Why do players stray offside so much on this game? 
I don't think I've ever played a FIFA game where players stray offside as much as the 2014 World Cup game. Puki. He somehow managed to run around the Russian defence here. This is a bit of a weird run and that was a hell of a save. And I went down in the box, no penalty either. Puki. Oh, what a save by the Russian keeper again. This man is keeping us out. He's like a brick wall. Such a defensive game. Through a ball. Cut out there. Come on. Go for the strike. Oh, we're not going to get anything out of this game. But it, it does benefit us a little bit because our next opponent is Bulgaria. And I feel that in the reverse fixture, I could have them. Like, we're not going to bottle it. Well, we better not do. Over the top. Russia, though. No, that's not going to be anything. So that's going to be it. A nil-nil. That's about fair, to be honest. It's a fair result for the situation and the matchup. Russia were really sort of piling on a lot of pressure. But they just didn't really do an awful lot in front of goal. We had a few chances and we couldn't score because Akinfeyev was just an absolute like machine in goal. So, yeah. It's uh, nil nil. Our last match is going to be against Bulgaria, and I'm fairly sure Russia will have to play Ukraine. I think so. That's your table going up to the final match, and um, there's still a possibility we could lose that top spot. We need to either win or draw to have any hope of going through to the World Cup. So, yeah, I was right. Russia have Ukraine in their last match, so. I'm praying that Ukraine hold them back. Here we go then. Final day of qualifying. And if Finland win, then they will go through to the World Cup. How about that? That would be really cool if we can get Finland to the 2014 World Cup. But Bulgaria have shown that they can be a nuisance. They were a bit of a nuisance last time we played them. Good tackle by Purcell. He's going through. Fussell, he scores. Yes, come on. And that's four minutes in. And Mikhail Fussell has scored to make it 1-0. Just dispossessed the Bulgarian defender and tapped it in. Nice one. Russia must be a little bit mad about that one. They must have kicked off their game and then found out that we've already gone 1-0 up. So, yeah, not brilliant for them. Oh, this is such a nightmare to try and tackle sometimes. Sometimes your defenders will not move. No matter how much you want them to, they just won't move. Go through a ball. Puki, has he got enough strength and stamina? No, just tackled. This is what I mean. Bulgaria are a very dodgy side. Like I don't know why they're like half good and half bad. Russia have scored against Ukraine. Okay. So in the situation we're in right now, it's still okay. But... Yeah, thanks Ukraine for helping me out there. <laughs> you know that like, the game's going to try and like screw me over with Bulgaria. Like They'll probably equalise or something. It's going to go out for a goal kick and that's going to be half time with the score at 1-0 to Finland. Again, we haven't really been able to capitalise on this yet. And there is a danger that Bulgaria could equalise. We just need one more goal to pull it out of reach. Over the top. No. Not happening. I don't think we're going to get the second goal. Not like we need it at the moment. But it would be just a security thing for me. 89th minute. Approaching the 90th. Is there anything in store for Bulgaria? I hope not. It's only one minute of added. All we need to do is boot it down the field. And that's what we're exactly going to do. I'm not going to bottle this. And we're going to the World Cup. Come on. We're going to the World Cup with Finland. We had to battle hard at the end for that. Because Russia were on our tails for most of the campaign, to be honest. And don't forget, they beat us in the first video as well. And they made it look quite easy. So Finland come out on top with the automatic quali qualification into 2014. Russia will have to go through via the playoffs. And um, yeah, that's good. That's that's awesome. Well done, Finland. That's your final table. We had 23 points. Russia with 21. Ukraine with 15. Bulgaria with 14. Latvia with 12. And Luxembourg with 1. We are here at the draw for the World Cup. So let's draw the teams. Okay, so Q8 is our first uh, draw into Group C. Uh, we got USA... 
Um, Tunisia. Okay. Um, Uruguay. South Africa in Group A. Uh, Finland are in Group D. Okay, let's see who joins us. Uh, group A has Brazil. Okay. Uh, group F, the Netherlands. Come on, give me someone decent. Switzerland in Group G. Group B will have Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, Argentina in Group B as well. Oman in Group F. In Group F, we'll have Ivory Coast as well. It's so random how they draw this these teams out. It's not it's not like in order or anything like that. It's just like you know, um, random. We got Mexico in with Group D, Paraguay as well. So we got Mexico, Paraguay in with Finland. That's not too bad. Let's hope that we get someone who's around about the same rating as them as well. Group C, France going to Group C. Group E, Costa Rica. In Group A, Germany, okay. Uh, group G, Mali. Welcome to the World Cup, Mali. Spain in Group E. Not done too bad to um, avoid these bigger teams. Ah, uh, oh, <laughs> I just jinxed it. I was like, yeah, you know, no problem. England, of course. So we got England, Mexico and Paraguay. I may as well skip the draw now. And that's your last few teams in the groups. I guess you guys want to know what happened in the qualifying rounds for the other regions of the world. So um, that's your African qualifying zones, your playoffs for the African qualification. Uh, most notably, Botswana got there, but they lost, unfortunately. Um, Mali and Guinea as well. That's pretty cool that both of them got to the playoffs. And Rwanda as well, but sadly, they got destroyed by Cameroon over both legs. That's your Asia qualification um, standing. So, of course, I think we've gone through this before, but it was very close in Group A. Very, very close. Saudi Arabia had a really bad campaign in Group A. In Group B, it was a little bit more clear-cut. Uzbekistan went to the playoffs, which ended 3-3 on aggregate to Australia. Very unlucky for Uzbekistan there. They could have done it, but they got screwed over by the away goal rule. In Oceania, Tahiti came top of the standings in um, OSC, but I imagine they got bounced out in um the playoffs we'll have a look at that in a second that's south america for you there so uruguay chile argentina and colombia went through and paraguay i presume went through the playoffs so australia were actually the ones that lost against paraguay again on the away goal rule and um trinidad and tobago went against tahiti and that was a fairly competitive game it was 4-2 tahiti took the first leg but then lost in the second leg that's really unlucky for tahiti very very unlucky imagine if tahiti did it that would have been so cool that's your final CONCACAF standing. So, yeah, Bermuda got zero points in that group. Very, very unfortunate. And that's UEFA. That's your UEFA qualifying standings, your final qualifying standings. If you want to have a look at them in more detail and stuff, you can pause the video. And that has been your World Cup qualifying run with Finland. We have one more part to do. And that's obviously the World Cup portion. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this part today. If you did, then give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always. And I'll see you again for the next video.